Good evening and welcome to the Policy and Resources Committee, 21st of December. Um, I'd just like to remind all members if they could turn off their cameras and microphones until they are waiting to speak. Uh, just read out the webcast notice. This meeting will be webcast and a record retained on the Council website. For those at home viewing the webcast, I would like to inform you that if you look above the video, you will see a resource tab. Select this and a link to the agenda will appear in the right hand side. This will allow you to open the agenda in PDF form and follow the discussion and the debate. We have uh, apologies for this evening uh, from Councillor Tom, Tom Usher, um, who sends his apologies and Councillor Jean Robinson will be deputising for him. Uh, Councillor Williamson has had some technical problems. Tech, she's the chair of this committee and uh, Vicky is uh, Vicky Shaw is just uh, going to explain um, the issue over that tonight. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Councillor Leach. Yes, members, um, if the chair of the meeting is present in the room, then they should chair the meeting. But in light of Councillor Williamson's difficulties, I think what she would like to ask you to do this evening is to consent that we waive standing orders uh, to allow Councillor Leach as the vice chair to chair the meeting. And then if for any reason Councillor Williamson's uh, technology fails, we're not constantly swapping uh, between chairs. So perhaps if Councillor Williamson could just confirm that that is her wish and if members would be prepared to indicate whether they are happy to consent to that waiving of the standing orders. Yes, thanks, Vicky. That is correct. And I'd appreciate it if members uh, would waive the, the standing orders for tonight. Thank you. OK, can we yeah. can we get a seconder for that, please? And then a group. I'll second that and then we can move. OK, and have we got a send for that? Can yes. Yes, it's yes. 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 OK, okay. that's great. Th thank you very much, committee. Um, Vicky, would you like to do a roll call, please? Yes. So, Councillor Anderson. Good evening, Vicky. Tom Anderson present. Councillor Carabia. Good evening, everybody. Councillor Carabier present. Thank you. Councillor Cleary. Yeah, hello, everyone. Pat Cleary present. Councillor Clements. Good evening. Councillor Wendy Clements present. Councillor Gilchrist. Yes, present. Thank you. Councillor Green. Yes, good evening, Vicky. Present. Councillor Gray. Good evening, Councillor Gray present. Councillor Andrew Hodson. Good evening, Vicky. Councillor Andrew Hodson here. Councillor Leach obviously is present. She's been introducing the meeting. Councillor McLaughlin. Good evening, uh, Councillor McLaughlin present. Councillor McManus. Hello, Councillor McManus present. Councillor Nolan. Councillor Nolan present. Councillor Rennie. Councillor Leslie Rennie present. Councillor Robinson. Good evening, Councillor Robinson present. Councillor Spriggs. Councillor Spriggs. Good evening, apologies. Councillor Christine Spriggs present. Councillor Stewart. Good evening, Councillor Stewart present. And Councillor Williamson. Good evening, present. Thank you. I think that's everybody present, Chair. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, Councillor Hodson and Councillor Stewart, your, your microphones are quite low. If you can try and adjust those, um, if you do need to speak, that would be helpful. Um, are there any declarations of interest? No? Just okay. Say, yeah, I've problems with my sound all afternoon, so I, I will speak as loud as I can when I'm near. It's okay. Okay, thank you. You are still low, Andrew. Thanks for that. OK, um, item four, public and members questions. I'm not aware of there being any public questions. Can that just be confirmed, please? Yes, that's correct, Chair. There are no public questions and no public statements have been received either. Or petitions? No public petitions, no. OK, and are there any questions from members? No, we've not received any questions from members. I don't know whether members have any petitions that they would wish to submit. No. OK, no. so moving swiftly on then to uh, agenda item five, which is small business project, which is pages one to four in your pack. 
if I can invite Chair Halewood, the Director of Resources, uh, to speak to this, please, and uh, Wendy Nichols, the Senior Business Designer, to present the report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just going to highlight the main areas of the report. Wendy is here, as you quite rightly say, for any um, technical questions, but it is quite a, a straightforward report. Um, so the report today, the smart, the smart Business Project is the upgrade of the Council's Enterprise Resource System, um, ERP system for short. And these systems relate to uh, the key critical business systems across the Council, which includes finance, human resources and procurement, the main uh, three systems that are uh, involved in that integrated system. Um, the existing system that we have called Oracle One Business is out of date and it has been for quite some time. It was actually uh, first in operation since 2005. It is obsolete now and is uh, proposing, uh, proposing a real risk to the council in terms of the information and the operation of it. Um, in this year, in March, on the 24th of March, um, approval was given by the Cabinet at the time to go out for a full tender exercise to replace the system. And that was on the basis of uh, two sources of information, a strategic outline case and an outline business case. A full business case has now been produced for the Smart Business Project. Um, the tender has run its course and we do have um, preferred uh, bidders that we are uh, happy or uh, content to um, potentially award. The recommendation in the report is really to get some scrutiny of the full business case and get some oversight uh, by members of that full business case to ensure that um, members are happy when we actually bring a paper back to Policy and Resources Committee in January with the full business case for the award of the tender. So the recommendation for today, Chair, is just to appoint a task and finish group to provide that scrutiny, member oversight and scrutiny, um, and that the task and finish group will meet on the 6th of January in the new year and to go through the full business case and um, to have the opportunity to scrutinise and ask officers of any um, information relating to the business case and the award of the tender. So for today, Chair, it's just the approval of the task and finish group. We don't need to actually um, approve who will be on the task and finish group. Um, and I'll just pause there for any questions. And as you quite rightly say, Wendy uh, Nichols is available should there be any technical questions for members of the committee to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, are there any questions from members? I can see a couple of hands up. Just bear with me one moment. So, Councillor Gilchrist. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, those of us who don't have personal experience or understanding of the technicalities of this are going to rely on members of the working party uh, to go through the detail. What I'd be interested to hear from Cher is at what level or what were the uh, expertise or the detailed kind of probing questions that were asked of the tenders to make sure now we're down to pretty well the last stage that the proposed supplier and equipment has been thoroughly um, studied to make sure it meets our requirements. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you, Chair. I will bring Wendy in um, now, if uh, when, if that's okay, Wendy, to answer that question for Councillor Gilchrist. Um, thank you, Wendy, if you, if you wouldn't mind coming in now. Thank you, Wendy. You're on mute, Wendy. Hiya, thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah, we've um, gone through an evaluation process and we sent out... Um, a bid and a tender process to a number of suppliers via the chest on the RM3821 framework. And we basically went through a number of technical questions, non-technical questions and delivery questions across uh, the whole tender. And we invited bidders to submit their answers. Then we put a cross party together across all the council to go through that evaluation process. Councillor Gilchrist, does that cover your question? Hmm. Well, I'm grateful for your assurance. Uh, I can only hope that um, when we members who are on this panel have been through it, we can assure it does what it says on the tin or whatever computers do. Thanks very much. Uh, Wendy, before um, you, you cut off, could I just ask you, have you done stress testing on it? Stress testing? Um, so what? have we maximised the use of the system to make sure it doesn't fall over? We haven't got the system yet, so as soon as um, as soon as we 
award the tender and bring in the system that's one of the things we will be doing it's going to be a cloud-based system and um so there is a lot of failover you know and support because it's cloud-based so the suppliers okay. um the employee you know the suppliers themselves of the system will have done exhaustive stress testing okay that was it that was what i was looking for to, yeah. to know that some some stress testing had been done by them already Okay, thank you. Okay, I've got Jeff Green and I've got Yvonne Nolan. Jeff? Thanks, Anita. Yes, I mean, we'll support the recommendations. Um, you know, I think our group and I, I have some expertise or experience only in introducing an ERP system. And I think one of the key areas of it, <clears throat> which wasn't mentioned, of course, um, uh, probably an oversight, is payroll, uh, which is a which is a key element of an ERP system, uh, and you know as you can imagine, it's quite important to all our staff that that sort of thing is got right. Um, I I just think that it, it does require some scrutiny about what the delivery methodology is, um, and I think if we look at that business case, the full business case, and then come back again when I was chair of the audit and risk committee one of our concerns the committee's concerns was the <clears throat> was the availability of the data and the av availability of actually utilizing a new erp system to provide the sort of data you know almost real-time data that allows the council to plan financially understand where we are at various stages and to you know to adopt to to change or to to move things rather than having to wait um, quite a, a significant period of time and also of course that so much of the current system is still spreadsheet based um, and the issues the time consuming issues as much as accuracy issues that flow from that so I think it is important so I think the organization we do need to crack on but given this is an investment they tend to be once in a generation type um, type purchases and procurements and organizational uh, issues that I think it is worth giving the final business case, final full business case that scrutiny and the council some assurance that we're we're going in the right direction and we're making the right choice I think that's um, you know I think that will be beneficial which is why we'll be supporting the recommendation thanks uh, Anita thanks Jeff was that you putting yourself forward for the task and finish group as well Jeff I'll, I'll have to confirm with the, the new leader of the group, uh, Anita. OK, thank you very much, Jeff. OK, so Yvonne, I've got you next. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Anita. Um, similar sorts of, of um, comments that have come from Councillor Green. I'm concerned that whatever new system we get, I agree Oracle is obviously grossly out of date and, and not a lot of use now. Um, but are we going to get management information, performance information, financial information in real time? Um, that's one of the key questions. And also, what demonstrations have we had from these preferred bidders? Um, have they been in? Have they provided us with a demonstration of their systems? And who's been able to see that and who's making those decisions? Thanks, Yvonne. It, Wendy, did you want to come back on those? Uh, yes, thanks, Chair. Yeah, just to answer the questions, yeah, we have had a, a number of presentations virtually, of course, uh, from preferred bidders, and they went through a number of technical questions that a number of officers put through to them. Um, we recorded some of those presentations as well, so they have answered all those questions. Thanks, Wendy. Um, yeah. Uh, Yvonne, did you want to come back? Yeah, um, my question was about are we looking for a system which provides us with management information and financial information in real time? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, one of the one of the critical success factors we have in the system is to make sure that we have both analytics and management information, and the the aim is to get real time information, and that is one of the main critical success factors of the project itself. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Yvonne. Uh, Chris Carubier, and then I've got Jeanette Williamson. Thanks, Chair. Um, 
Yeah, a couple of questions. Um, 3.3, it says after a successful evaluation process, uh, a preferred supplier, an application has been chosen. And then in 3.4, it says to ensure a robust and clear case is built. Did we not? Is that not the wrong way around? Should we not have built our case first of what we required and then gone out to the process for evaluation? I mean, I, I, like Jeff, I have some experience in this area and I've, I've done some of these ERP systems myself. And it seems to me from reading this that it's possible that we're only picking the best of a bunch that may do a percentage of what we want because it already exists. And I'm wondering how much of that is going to be bespoke and how much is going to be off the shelf for us as a as a as a uh, as a uh, borrower. Please. Okay, I don't know. Is is Wendy going to come back on that or share? Um, thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll bring Wendy in first, if that's okay, and then I thank can you. come in afterwards. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, we've been through uh, the evaluation process. We went through a discovery stage, a design stage, and then obviously we went out to tender with, um, you know, to find the preferred supplier of the, the best system that fits with the for the council. Now, one of the design principles has been to not bespoke, to accept best practice and to not bespoke and design too much away from the core system. So that is one of the main design principles for the ERP system. Just just to come in on that chair, I think um, in terms of Councillor Caribbean's question in, in terms of the, uh, the formatting of the report as well. So um, the, 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 and the ERP board, which is an office the board has um, been through, as, as Wendy says, and evaluated the tenders. Um, based on the requirements of that design process, the outline business case, um, and has a chosen a preferred supplier. But um, in light of the full business case now, um, we just are requesting in this report that we have the office, the uh, member task and finish group to ensure that there is scrutiny and oversight of the officer decision to award the supplier. So we haven't awarded the tender yet and the supplier, and that won't be done until um, January chair after the feedback from the office, from the member task and finish group. Chris, are you happy with that response? Uh, I am, but I have a supplementary question if I may, chair. Um, yes, certainly, the go question, on. The question is, uh, are we, as part of the um, evaluation and the successful uh, awarding of this contract, Will that also include the integration of legacy systems that need to be brought into this new system? Or will that go as piecemeal to other companies or, or will they take the whole thing on? Would you like me to answer that, Chair? Yes, please, yes. Wendy. Yeah, um, the, the, what we've done is evaluated all the systems across the council and the preferred supplier is going to take on those full integration of all the systems that are required to integrate into the main ERP system. Chris, it sounds like you've got quite a lot of experience in this field as well. Um, I yeah, think just you're a little. That your heart. <laughs> uh, have you, have you uh, your group got a nomination at all for the task and finish group? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be me. Uh, okay. going to be Chris. Thanks, Phil. Uh, uh, that's good. Thank you very much. Okay, Jeanette Williamson. Thanks, Chair. On, th on that note, um, our, we have um, we have our volunteers' name as well, and that's going to be Councillor Paul Stewart, really. I was just a question. It's, a, it's not a question for any of the officers. It was more for Jeff, really. Jeff, do you know when you'll be in a position to tell us who you, your, your new leader is and when uh, I will hear from them? I'm, I'm, um, I'm sure there are processes in place to let you know as soon as possible, yeah. Jeanette. Um, for the time being, I, th I think I heard Cher saying you didn't need to, the names tonight because um, mm -hmm. the meeting's on the 6th of Jan, isn't it? The uh, task and finish. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we, don't, <clears throat> we don't actually need the names tonight, but uh, I'm sure processes are in place to let you know, Jeanette. All right, then. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jeff. And you're absolutely right. The, um, the, we don't need the names uh, this evening, but uh, just as you were waxing lyrical there and very fluent on the matter i thought you might have wanted to nominate yourself okay thanks for that so i've got moira mclaughlin 
Thanks, Anita. Um, I have to say I've got absolutely no experience of this and I see that there's no requirement for the task and finish group to be politically balanced. So we're ha I'm happy for um, those people who have got some experience and do want to be part of a task and finish for group to report back um, to those of us who've got less experience and uh, probably wouldn't bring much to the process. Thanks, Moira. I, I think you're absolutely right. It's no, no point in having a political balance in this. And um, if you know people don't have the expertise, we do need the experts uh, amongst us in this field that um, should uh, should deal with this. And I, I think the the number of people um, needs to sort of be agreed as well. Um, okay, Pat. Yeah, thanks, Chair. It was really just similar to Councillor McLaughlin uh, from our point of view. Uh, we're happy to let those members who've got specific experience in this field to uh, to re report back to the committee. So we won't be uh, providing a nomination as such. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. OK, is anybody else wants to speak on this matter at all? OK, so uh, the recommendations are on page one and it's that the policy resources committee are required to appoint members of the committee to a task and finish group, which we've discussed to support the development of the full business case. Agree that a meeting, agree that a meeting of the task and finish group be held on the 6th of January, as, as Cher outlined, and that the outcome of that meeting uh, will be reported to the meeting of the policy and resources committee scheduled to take place on the 20th of January. So um, I'm happy to move those recommendations, uh, but I just want to ask a, a question from um, from Cher. Who are we actually giving names to, Cher? Is it yourself or is it to Wendy? Thank you, Chair. It, it is to the uh, the program manager, Andy Dixon, and okay. Andy will contact members uh, after this, this this meeting. Now the approval is, or, or since the approval will be given. Thank you. Okay. So if you, if Andy, if you can note those two names that are already put forward, Paul Stewart and Chris Carubier. Thanks. Do I have a seconder for this, please? Yeah, I'll second that. Andy, I'll second you. Okay, thank you very much. Could uh, I, just, before you, just before you move on, Anita, Chair, could I quickly ask if there's any documentation available on what we've sent out to the suppliers to so we can have a look at it before the 6th? That would be extremely useful. Yeah, that that would make some make sense, wouldn't it, to do that? Yeah. So I think once we've once Andy's decided who the uh, the people are who were nominated, um, I'm sure that we can we can get that information out. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Jeff Green, you've got your yeah, hand again. Just, just a quickie. Um, I understand that Andy Dixon is going to be the person who's sending information out and names will be sent to. Um, <clears throat> I'm presuming that the SRO will be in attendance on the working group. I know it's important that we have, um, you know, the technical level, but I, I would also hope that the SRO, who's overseeing the entire programme, will actually be present as well. Do we have um, an answer for Jeff? Yeah, through you, Chair. Thank you. That's me. I'm the SRO. I will be in attendance at that meeting on the 6th of January. Yes. OK, thanks very much. Happy with that then, Jeff. So I've got a mover and a seconder for Agenda Item 5. Can I have that agreed by assent? Agreed. Agreed. Thank agreed. you. Agreed. OK, if we can move on to the next agenda item uh, six, essential working capital agreement renewal on pages five to ten of your pack. And I'll invite Chair Hellwood, Director of Resources, to present the report, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, so this report really is um, to the agree to for the committee to agree to the extension of a working capital agreement renewal, which is effectively um, a cash flow um, agreement for Ed Central. Ed Central is the company that is co-owned 50% uh, by Wirral Council and 50% by Cheshire West and uh, Chester Council. Now, in terms of this um, working capital agreement, the, the cash flow agreement, there has been agreement in place already between the two councils um, to support Ed Central in this for this facility and the uh, request is for the extension of this facility for another five years as the existing facility is actually run out. 
And just a couple of points to note on this, um, Chair. The, the cash flow facility is only to support the company um, when it needs to uh, draw down some cash to support dips in its, in its cash flow, temporary dips in its cash flow. So the way the company is structured, it provides services to schools in Cheshire West and to um, Wirral. And in, for, in order for it to do that, it has to provide uh, provisions and purchase provisions and pay staff. And then it is reimbursed by the schools when they actually pay the income to the company. Um, so there is a, a mismatch, if you like, in the sense of the expenditure it incurs and then the income it actually receives. So this facility is a temporary facility, as I say, for both councils to provide up to £2 million um, for the company to be able to draw the company down when it requires, when it reduces, when it experiences um, an increase in expenditure. And then when it receives income from its uh, traded services, from its schools, it repays that money back to both of the councils. So it is a, a temporary function uh, on that basis. Now, uh, previously, as I said, the, um, the facility of £2 million that we have provided for Ed Central uh, each has not been drawn down to its full capacity previously. So uh, it is a safety net for the company, but they haven't actually drawn down um, the full £2 million previously. And the council, both councils do make uh, a small amount of income from the interest. So it actually charges uh, interest to Edcentral uh, in line with state aid compliance rec requirements. Um, it is a commercial rate of interest, which is between 4 and 5%. And the, uh, both councils do receive um, as I say, a small amount of income um, as a result of that uh, interest that, that it incurs. Just one more point to note here uh, for the committee is that uh, even though this is a, a, a cash flow facility, um, the council is not able to spend that cash flow on day-to-day -day services. So it's just cash in the bank, it's not budget. Um, and as I say, uh, it's not allowed to, uh, by law, to actually spend this cash flow on day-to-day -day services. So it is only quite specific um, to support Edcentral in the terms of uh, its, its normal business as usual operation. So uh, the recommendation, Chair, is that uh, the committee approve the renewal of the interest-bearing working capital cash flow agreement of up to £2 million just specifically for Wirral Council um, for an additional five-year term to commence as soon as applicable. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Um, I've got a couple of hands up, but the first hand up was uh, Paul Stewart and then Jean Robinson, and then I'll go to Phil Gilchrist. Okay. Paul? Yeah, thanks. thanks very much, Anita. Um, the, the, the main part of my question has actually been uh, answered and reassured by, by Cher. So, in effect, this is a, um, a £2 million overdraft facility that the council are offering at Central. Um, and you've said that this will um, generate some interest. Uh, could I just ask if that interest will be above the rate of interest that the council would be paying on any of its um, sort of facilities. So I appreciate we may not be borrowing to fund this, but if we did borrow to fund this, would the, would the interest that we get back from it be in excess to what we would have to pay in interest and um, administration costs? Would, would all that be met by um, Edge Central? I mean, ultimately, what we want is that this is going to wash its own face at the very least and ideally be making some money for the council. Thanks, Thank Paul. You. Thanks, Paul. Chair, can you respond to that, please? Um, I can, yes, thank you, Chair. So, yes, Councillor Stewart, for your question. Um, the interest rate that the council uh, um, borrows at or um, it utilises uh, to fund uh, items itself is, is quite small. We do have preferential interest rates. Um, and this interest rate for Edcentral, um, to meet state aid requirements, has to be a commercial in interest rate. So it is higher um, than what we would incur ourselves. Um, and as a result of that, we do receive income from it. It does wash its face, as you say, so it does cover the cost of, of administration. And over the last 12 months, we've received in the region of £50,000 um, from interest from Ed Central, which is able to go into um, offsetting the administration. And with anything left, it goes into our budget to support um, council day-to-day -day services. That's great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. I've got Jean Robinson next. 
Uh, thank you, thank you. Sure. Some of the things around Saxon and Paul's. Um, it was just to sort of ask, um, you've mentioned the, the 50,000, the 50, is that for us or is it because obviously it's 4 million, isn't it? 2 million from Whittle and 2 million from um, Cheshire. Cheshire. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so is that, obviously was it was 100,000 in total, was it, or is it the 50,000 split between both? Uh, thank you, Councillor Robinson. No, the 50,000 is just on Wirral's element of it, so it's just on that £2 million. Pounds. So it's all for Wirral. OK, thanks, Jean. Uh, I've got uh, Phil Gilchrist next. Thank you, Chair. Section 3.8 of the report on page 7 uh, posits a situation in which there might be further requirements, but it talks about a future report being required if any additional support should be required. So I'm wondering, that what is the mechanism for that? If there were to be a, a cash flow problem, how quickly would we be alerted and how quickly would be we be able to respond as a council. Uh, I'm assuming there's a flow chart which gets triggered if there appear to be difficulties that get highlighted. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Gilchrist, and, and through you, Chair. So we, there is a shareholder board that um, monitors the performance of the um, council-owned companies. So the shareholder board will, will be receiving um, regular updates from Essential in terms of its performance and uh, the, the shareholder board has already met um, in terms of the performance of Essential. So it is proposed that a further report would come through to the Policy and Resources Committee um, if there are any changes and if the shareholder board um, would also request um, some additional information through the committee. Just in terms of difficulties I suppose that um, you, you raise. So the, the, the company is an income generating company and does provide services to schools. Um, so if the company was, was to get into difficulty, um, the income comes from the schools um, are on a, a, um, an accrual basis. So the income would still be liable and the schools would still need to pay that income. So the council would be able to recoup the income if anything would ha to happen to Essential directly from the schools, which would significantly minimise our risk um, of anything uh, in terms of our funding that we have uh, provided to Essential. Thanks, Sir. Phil. Is that OK for you, Phil? Yeah, worth following up. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. So I've got four more hands. So I've got Pat Cleary and then Jeff. Green and then Chris Carubian and Wendy Clements. So uh, first, Pat Cleary. Uh, thanks very much, Chair. Yeah, I do have a couple of questions for Sarah, please. Um, 3.4, it says the, the current agreement is due to expire at the beginning of December 2020. Obviously, we're, we're gone beyond that and we're into whatever short term arrangements are in place. But my question would be why this was not brought to members uh, before the actual uh, existing agreement expired. Uh, and secondly, Sarah, you mentioned that the £2 million has never been fully drawn down. Can you tell us how much uh, has been drawn? What's the maximum that has actually been drawn at any one time, please? Thank you. Thanks, uh, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Cleary, just to answer your question. So um, there is um, an, an, a, an, a, a part of the agreement which actually provides for a short term extension um, ahead of any member decision um, for the uh, full agreement to be renewed. And that's delegated to myself. So I had already taken um, that decision to agree a short term extension uh, to the end of March. Um, for the uh, agreement to be renewed, so um, the formal approval then is for is for a, the five year agreement. It's just a matter of timing that it hasn't come here before. Um, we're waiting for the shareholder board to convene. So following the new committee uh, requirements um, post uh, the AGM in September, um, we were just waiting for the shareholder board to convene <coughs> for the. Um, the issue to be discussed at the shareholder board. So this is the first meeting after the shareholder board this has met and um, that the report has actually come to this, uh, has been able to come to this committee. Um, just in terms of the amount uh, being drawn down, I don't know the answer to that, but um, I have got one of my officers who are, is, is actually at the meeting, um, Pete Molyneux, who may be able to answer that for you, Councillor Cleary. So if I could ask you to come in, Pete, do you, do you have that information to hand? Hi, Chair. Hi, Chair. Um, over the last 12 months, the highest figure has been 1.3 million or 2 million. So I've only got the information for the last 12 months. And uh, you're correct to say that they've, they've never taken the full 
um, the full two two million pounds. I say in the last twelve months, it's been one point three million maximum. That helps. Thank Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Cher. Okay, um, if I can move, uh, Pat, are you happy with all those yeah, responses? Yeah, that's fine, Cher. Thank okay. you for answering both Thank my you. questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff Green. Thank you, Anita. Yes, I, we as a committee appoint a shareholder board, um, and I'm one of our reps on it. Um, I, I think we did, if you remember, when we were doing the budget, we had to uh, break out from the budget workshops in order to try and attend a, a shareholder board, and that was the meeting, even though the IT um, failed us. Just to remind everyone, um, this is a shared service. Um, that I think was set up by in Graham Burgess's time, I think, uh, in terms of when ourselves and, and um, Cheshire West came together with this um, with, with this operation, which was also a way of securing um, our employees at the time, the council employees securing their futures and also making sure that they were working within a, a, a good company that looked after them and so on and so forth. Uh, which it has done. The other thing I would just say about uh, about them as well is, of course, um, they helped us out enormously during the summer and in terms of, you know, free school meals and making sure uh, um, that meals were available and so on and so forth. So it is a good company. All the, um, I think, as the report states and as um, as some of the monitoring reports say as we've received them, that it is a that it is a, a good sound business. It has been operating well, producing you know high degrees of satisfaction, it has been flexible enough to support the council when we've needed real help um, in, in making sure that all those vulnerable children that needed a needed a, a meal actually got them. So they have been a have been a very good company and they have helped us and helped the people of Wirral significantly. And they have a great track record in terms of, you know, utilising this facility and making sure it, it they pay it back and with a, mm -hmm. as Cher has pointed out, a slight surplus as well. So um, for those reasons, the sense of our group anyway is that we'll be supporting this recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Sorry. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Chris Krubier. Uh, yeah, I agree with a lot of the stuff that Jeff just said, actually, about how well they perform for us as a company uh, within Wirral. Uh, I've got a couple of quick questions, if I may. Um, one is, I'm not really a, a financial guru, so I don't know how this works, but we are on a joint two million each, us and Cheshire West. How does that work in principle? Is it both, do we, when they draw down monies, do they take it from one first, then the other, or do, is it evened out across the two? So in other words, if they limit out in Cheshire West, do they then come to us and that's why we're not um, getting at the, the top level or, or they've not uh, maximised ours. And my second question is, uh, in 3.7, we've got um, there's a statement there that says, although various governmental support has been utilised, the company will need to negotiate additional facilities beyond the cash flow agreements to cover exceptional costs, et cetera, for COVID issues. How much of a risk is that for them and us in that respect? Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Um, thank you, Councillor Car uh, Carubier. So um, your, your first question in terms of whether the, um, the facility is evened out, it, it is evened out. So uh, every time they apply um, for the, the, the cash flow working capital facility, it is even 50-50 by Cheshire West, Chinchester and Wirral. Um, so we, we both provide exactly the same amount of facility at the same time. Um, and in terms of your second question, um, I mean, uh, Ed Central has been impacted by um, COVID and um, they are actually currently re-evaluating uh, their performance and their finances. Um, they, are, they have had difficulties and they have drawn down su support from the government um, and they are actually preparing some information into their long term position at the moment. And this will be, I mean, if there is additional support that they require um, as a result of that. This will be the uh, results of a further report that would come through to the Policy and Resources Committee at a future date. Uh, but they are in the position at the moment where they are um, re-evaluating their uh, financial and non-financial performance as a result of the impact of COVID. 
if if I may, Chair, I just quickly, um, I think I suppose my question is leading towards the statement that if they're having issues financially and then they draw down on that two million or four million as it is, and they get to the limit of that and they still have problems, they they become say they become insolvent. Do we are we at a risk of losing that two million because we can't recoup it? That's my point. I don't know how much the risk element is there. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, through you, Chair. So uh, the, the risk is minimised because um, they they recoup income from schools, from um, areas that they trade, so traded services. So the facilities and the services that they provide, schools uh, have entered into an agreement to pay for those for them. So in terms of the cash flow facility, which is specifically um, underwriting dips and uh, peaks in their expenditure and income, if there is uh, uh, income that is still owed from schools, then um, they, that would come directly to the council if anything was to happen to Ed Central. So Ed Central would only provide um, the items that schools are paying for. So uh, in theory there, the risk would be minimised because the income would come through to the, to the council as a result of that. I suppose there would be an issue is if um, schools are not buying back services um, and if they are uh, not able to provide services to schools so that they're not able to buy them back, the risk there would be uh, the additional cost that Ed Central would incur. And if they are drawing down resources and there isn't any income to cover that, then that would be a risk to the council. Um, but I mean, if uh, and this would be subject to a further report in terms of Ed Central's um, performance on financial and non-financial as well. Um, because it is a 50% owned company by um, Wirral anyway, the risk would be there um, even if Ed Central were in difficulty or not, because if they were in difficulty, then the uh, services would transfer back to the council um, unless the council had another uh, solution where it could um, provide those services from a, another employer or another organisation. So the risk um, would be there for the council anyway, whether Ed Central would not be able to, to repay that money or not. But there would be, as I say, you know, there would um, we would assess, we, we do assess this and the shareholder board is will be receiving regular reports in terms of performance and that would be any early indicators to determine whether um, there would be any immediate action or future action that would need to be taken and that would be the subject of a further report to the committee. Thank you. Sharon. Thanks very much uh, for that detailed response. Um, Wendy, would you like to come in next please? Thanks Chair. Um, I just uh, listened carefully to all that people have asked um, and I know I've looked a number of times at the work that Ed Central does and very impressed with what they do and uh, so I would like to move that we uh, accept the recommendation and approve this renewal if that's acceptable to you chair. Yeah, thank you Wendy. Um, is there anybody who would like to second Wendy's? Movement? Yeah I'll second it. Um, Thanks Chris. Uh, Thanks. OK, um, I, I haven't heard anybody speak against this, so can we take uh, take it by assent? Agreed. 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 Thank, thank you, committee. OK, if we now move on to uh, agenda item seven, which is the work programme update, which is on pages 11 to 22 of your packs. And if I can invite Vicky Shaw, um, head of legal, to speak on this. But just before you do, um, I've got Jeff Green's hand up. So, Jeff, did you want to? Come in. Yes, please, if, if I may. I'm conscious that, um, and I'm sure Jeanette will bear this out also, at, a, at one of our um, agenda planning sessions and, and work programme sessions, I did raise, and it was agreed by all, um, <clears throat> all present, that we would look at how the council does consultation, and that was added to the work programme. And I also asked for a a report on the current state of the change program to come to PNR. I think that was supported by everyone that was there also. And it was just I didn't spot that on the on the work. I understand they may not be key decisions, though consultation might be um, <clears throat> in terms of the change program uh, might not be considered a key decision, but it was certainly put onto our work program. I think you were there, Nita, weren't you? I think you'll confirm that we agree that. So could they be added to the work programme, do you think? I've got I've got Council Williamson wants to come in as well, uh, Jeff, so uh, and Phil Gilchrist. So let's hear from the, those two 
as well. Jeanette? Thanks, Chair. No, yes, I do recall that as well. And I just had a few items um, I wanted to add. Um, I, I do apologise. I'm having problems with my report, getting my reports up because my um, system is so awful. But um, I did think that we should have um, <clears throat> income generation as uh, certainly something that should become to P&R as, as a matter of some quite importance, given the bu budget proposals that, that we've now gone to consult on. And I think the general consensus was that we hadn't quite focused as much as we could have on income generation. And then the other one was I, I have to speak into my group anyway today. I do believe that Ed Central should, should uh, we should have some sessions on Ed Central's. Um, I, I know that I'm on the shareholder board with yourself and Jeff, but I think for what, for members on a wider level, it would be useful for that. So if you could just note those comments, please, Chair. Thank you, Jeanette. I, I think we spoke about Invest to Save projects as well, didn't we? So, um, OK, so Phil Gilchrist. Mm. Mm, thank you, Chair. Yes, what I'm trying to work out, or perhaps I can have some help on, is at which point do the growth company produce a programme of things they want to do, and to who does it go to? I've been hoping, and I've probably missed some presentations that were done to members of, of various committees, but I want to know who has the general oversight of the arrangements for the next 12, 15 months of where they want to invest, where we're working with them on what sites. Again, it's back to income generation, but I was under the impression there'd be a document that would be signed off between various boards that would say what's happening and when, in which case is it part, should it be part of our work plan to oversee what the timeline is and where things are going and what progress is being made. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. Well, I, I can um, tell you that um, I've had this same conversation with uh, with Cap uh, Alan Evans, um, and uh, we are going to have a, a presentation to the Regeneration Committee. Um, I, I can open that out to other members. Uh, that's not a problem at all. I'm just wondering, Alan, whether you want to say anything further? Thanks, Chair. So uh, only just to say, reiterate what you said, Chair, really, that um, yeah, we are going to run a workshop uh, for the Economic Regeneration and Development Committee in January, um, but happy to, to extend that invite across to all members. That'll be an update on where the growth company is operating, what's going to happen over the next 12 months, and just a chance to ask some general questions, really. So, um, And that will come back to the Economic Regeneration and Development Committee in a, in a formal format then. So. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take that as an action, and I can open up that workshop. Yeah, can I? Uh, just uh, back, please, thanks, Alan. Sorry, Phil. Yes, thank you. Um, um, who actually signs off the plan? I'm, I'm delighted to come along to the regeneration committee because I knew that that was being prepared, as it were. But who actually signs it off on behalf of the council from the World Council side? Thank you. So, if I can, through you. Chair, so Councillor Gilchrist, the, the, the um, business plan um, has been previously approved by um, Cabinet, um, I think it was in early 2020, um, but in terms of uh, any additions to that, any uh, changes to that business plan, then it would come forward to Economic uh, Regeneration and Development Committee in the first instance and then on to policy and resources with any changes or any updates. Um, there is a, a work programme set for the, for the town centre um, and a couple of other developments as well. But any changes to that would, would uh, as I say, come back to um, economic regeneration and development and then on to policy and resources. Thank Alan, you you yeah. okay with that response now? Yes, thank you for that. Okay, th thanks, Alan. Okay, Vicky, so we'll come back to you now. <laughs> if you can just present this, please. Thank you. Yes, I, I, th I think members are aware of the purpose of this report, which is to ensure that members have the opportunity to contribute to the delivery of the committee's work programme. And I think members have already highlighted a number of issues that they'd like adding to the work programme. So I've noted down consultation, uh, the change programme, income generation, essential uh, and investor save projects. So if the committee are happy, we will add those to the to the work programme. OK, are there anything else that, that needs to be added to this before? Uh, I know members have already spoken on this, but is there anything else that we want to add in before we uh, move to the vote on this? No? 
Okay, well, I'm I'm happy to to move that uh, with the additions that as outlined by Vicky. Do I have a seconder, please? Happy to second that, Chair. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I haven't heard anything other than, any other comments, so I'm assuming I can take that by assent. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. <clears throat> Thanks, committee. Okay, so if we move on to uh, referrals and subcommittee minutes now. So we've got uh, agenda item eight, referral from council motion, cancel local authority debt, uh, which is at page 23 and 24 in your pack. Now, um, the action here was to write to uh, the group leaders to, to write to government, and that has happened, and we are currently waiting on a response. Um, so um, really just to, to give you an update on that, um, if we do want to go into any debate on this, um, we do have to have an officer's report um, ahead of that. So this was just really to give PNR an update. Uh, Tom, I notice you've got your hand up. Was, was it to make any comments or? It was just really a question. I don't want to get into a debate or, or anything on it. It was actually a risk on, well, to ask our director of resources, really, is there, is there any risk to our capitalisation bids in, in, in terms of a hair professional view? You know, I'm not asking for a political view here in terms of um, what the council's asking or being signed up, up for. Do we need to be careful on that? Yeah, I think I think what what I'll do is I'll, I'll note your comment, and I'm I'm sure that uh, that the the officers will pick that up. But I don't want to go into the debate on it because we're not allowed to do so without an officer's report. If you want an, um, this to be brought back as an officer's report, can you just say so now, please? I don't particularly. But what what are we agreeing to? So, so what what we've actually said here is that um, for the the item that was brought to council uh, was to the action was to write to um, to government, and that's what we've done. But we haven't had a response as yet. So when, when the response comes back, then we can bring that back to PNR. I'm happy to note it. Okay, Moira, you have your hand up as well. Thanks, Tom. I have. Have ten. Thanks very much. Uh, I have to say, um, I'm happy to note this too. I would like an officer's report because I do think we need to take seriously when council um, passes a notice of motion and deal with it um, in a serious way. Um, I know very little about the campaign for ha for council housing um, uh, to council local authority debt. So couldn't support this if we were going to debate it tonight because I don't know enough about that. So in, with ignorance of that, I would like an officer's report so that we can look at it properly and see what the implications would be for the council to pursue this further. OK, um, so um, we're happy to note this report then, but uh, we would, once we've got the response from government, we would like this to come back with, a, with an officer's report, please, so it can be debated further. Yeah, I'm happy to second that uh, request. OK. Everybody happy with that? Yeah, agreed. 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 Thank you, committee. Um, if we can move on to item nine now, which is minutes of the senior officer and appointments staffing subcommittee, pages 25 to 26. Any members got any comments on that at all? No, we're happy to note, those, yeah. happy to note those minutes. Yeah. I'm happy to move it. Moira, you, can you second Yes, that? I'll second it, yeah. Okay, can we take that by assent? Agreed, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. Agreed. Okay, the, the next item, uh, agenda item 10, is uh, contains exempt information. So the recommendation that under section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded from the meeting dur during consideration of the following items of business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined by paragraph three of part one of schedule 12A as amended to the act. The public interest test has been applied and favours exclusion. So I'm happy to move that. Do I have a seconder at all? Jeff, you have your hand up? Seconded, yeah. seconded well, Jeff. Can I, can I ask, um, and I'm sure we all agree in terms of, you know, of being as open and transparent as we can. And 
as I don't have those particular paragraphs right in front of me, and anyone watching this might not have those uh, paragraphs directly in front of them. Uh, I don't know whether it would be Vicky or Alan that could explain to us, I mean, what the what the kernel of the commercial interest is, because it's asking us to spend money on a particular project, um, and if we could have it in layman's terms, what the what the commercial nature of it, without going into detail, you know, I understand, but so, so do we want we... to, Jeff? Do we want to cover that on under uh, item eleven? Are we... no, I was just thinking it's probably best to do it now before okay. before the public are excluded. So at least the public understand in lay people's terms why it is we're being why it is we're going into a a less than directly open session. Okay, thanks, Jeff. I think Vicky, that would be you. I would think. Um. Chair, I think the um, section that is referred to here um, refers to information which is um, exempt because the, the, there is commercially sensitive information contained uh, within the report. So paragraph three is um, information relating to the financial or business affairs of, um, of the, um, the authority or of another party. So in, would I be right in this case then? through you, Anita, to say the commercial elements are with the person who, want, who is, you know, selling the particular thing, as opposed to commercial in terms of the fact that we're, you know, this report suggests we might buy it. Is that right? I, I think there could be commercial interests on both sides, Councillor Green. Mm -hmm. okay. You have well, that, I, I will accept it. Not happy but I think like, that's like, the advice I will accept it. Thank you very much. I've got Phil Gilchrist's hands up as well. Thank you. Of course I've considered the report and, and I reckon that the public interest test has been covered but I think when we've discussed this there might be uh, at the right time there should be a document or a minute that says exactly what we were discussing so that the public won't speculate about what we were discussing so if at the right time some announcement is made then it might be linked to this when we've considered this in detail chair if i could just perhaps assist um i think it may be that the committee may make a decision uh to authorize officers to take action when that action has been taken um, an officer decision notice could be published which gives further details to the public about the action that's been taken Okay, not ideal, but thank you, Vicky. Thank you for that. Okay, thank you very much. So, oh, can I take it by a sense that we will...